Thousand Club. Praise God. Oh, this is another, another opportunity to be a clarion voice with the backdrop of a saintly father that we witness his home going service today. And that is the Bishop John Henry Sheard. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. And I said on my last program celebrating Bishop Sheard is that his legacy is, God bless you, yeah, yeah, God bless you, I'm trying to see that name. Anyway, his legacy, God bless you, Sister Sandra, his legacy is that he raised two young men that uh, followed him well, let's say his example of salvation he received, or they received. God bless you, Thomas, Mike, and uh, Marcus, Thomas, and Brother D. God bless you. Yeah, I was at the funeral. And old folks say I was at the funeral. <laughs> James uh, Goham. All right, uh, what I got out of the funeral of Bishop John Henry, did I say, Natisha? All right, um, God bless you. What I got out of the uh, homegoing service, is what I saw. I saw two young men. Bless you, Brother William. No, I'm teaching tonight. No, I'm teaching tonight. I'm at Dr. Carwell. I'm preaching in the morning. I'm sorry, Sunday morning. So we're going to try to do it live some kind of way. We're going to make sure that y'all hear the message from uh, from Detroit coming from uh, Dr. Caldwell's church. And he's a good friend of mine, uh, a good friend of mine and my wife, Beverly, who's no longer with us, but uh, they have been great friends of ours. And so, I'm here with him. All right. Yes, yes, yes. It was a wonderful home going for a great man. Now, what I got out of the program or the service, the funeral, is uh, he left a legacy, his two sons. Ethan is the superintendent in the Church of God in Christ, and he is the pastor of his father's church. So we're talking about posterity. We're talking about passing the baton. We're talking about uh, the ministry of uh, Bishop Sheard. I'm talking about the Father John Henry Sheard. He trained his two sons by example. And I'm going to say something about the difference between leading by authority or leading by example. And watch this. 
and leading by influence. Now let me read this scripture here because I think every father need to hear this. I'm talking about every father need to hear this. I mean, his, his life is a living epistle uh, being read of men. And to leave on this earth to save young men a father that trained his sons in the way they should go, not in the way they want to go. And I said the other night, uh, training is forced direction. Forced direction. Training. And to get them to do what they don't want to do. And I said, uh, I think uh, Father's Day, I said that uh, life is a movie. And the father should be the director of the movie of his children's life. Train them in the way they should go. I think this uh, example of uh, Ethan and the present presiding bishop, Bishop Drew, Sheared is an example and it it justifies this man's life. It justifies his life. And I might even say it certifies him as a good man. Certifies him. Validates him that he's a good man. And Celebration brings validation. If you celebrate, you validate. So we celebrated this man's life today. Uh, we celebrate his life, and so we validate. Anything you celebrate, you validate. That's why you don't celebrate everybody, uh, because everybody's not worthy of celebration. Celebration brings validation. And so this has proven to be a life worth validating, worth celebrating. And so I might say the service was, was uh, timely. You had a few guys who wanted to preach and it wasn't time for them to preach, but they got to show how educated they are, how philosophical and theologically, you know, uh, that they just got it together. There wasn't the time for that. Anyway, I'm behaving myself. Whatever, whatever they do, let them, just let them do it, you know. But I'm saying there's a word that I want to give you. The word is verbostic, and that word means unnecessary words. We saw a lot of verbosity at the funeral. Unnecessary words. Unnecessary. I'm going to give you an example of uh, verbosity. And you're at the dinner table. It's Thanksgiving coming up. Now you're at the dinner table and you ask somebody to, to uh, let's say, give the blessing. And he's just going to keep going on and on and on. Lord, bless, bless the food, Lord. Bless the one that prepared it. Bless the farmer that grew it. <laughs> That's an example of verbosity. Or when you ask somebody to read a scripture, and then he gets the 119th Psalm. 
150, I think it's 150 verses. That's verbostic. You don't need to read that psalm. It's the longest psalm in the Bible. So there's a whole lot of verbosity that was going on today. You know, anyway, what I wanted to place emphasis on is that, well, let me read the scripture here. It says in uh, Titus 2 and uh, the 6th and the 7th verse. It says, as young men likewise exalt to be sober-minded. Ethan, sober-minded. Bishop J. Drew Sheard, sober-minded. Seventh verse. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Be a pattern. I was talking about the word, you know, the word two paws. Two paws. And that is a modeling example. And then Paul said, follow me as a follow Christ. Paul was an example of good works. And Paul want us all to be an example, especially to your sons and daughters, your children. And uh, so to be sober-minded and not to be frivolous or diaphanous, no depth, but to think with wisdom. And wisdom is to make the right decision in practical matters. Yes, I gotta do it. Uh, making the right decision uh, when you're talking about practical matters. And I know some people don't have no wisdom because um, for nieces, for nieces, a derivative of Sophia, wisdom, and then so, so nieces. And I love those words because for nieces, everybody need to know the end result before the initial action. For nieces says, don't do that because you're going to end up with this result. Wow. For nieces says, do not marry this boy, this Man, do not marry him. For Nisa said, don't marry him because he will not work. Yea, I say unto thee, run as long as thy feet shall take thee because he will not run. He will not work. For Nisa tells you. All right. For tells you that he is no good for you. So if you fail to listen to Farnesis, you're going to find yourself in some real trouble. And then Sunesis has to do with intelligence. To have the intelligent, the, the wherewithal, how to do it. Once uh, Farnesis certifies that it's all right, and you see the end result before the initial action? Don't lay with this boy. You're going to get pregnant, and he will not take care of the child. Don't you think a lot of young ladies need to have 
four nieces, and then sue nieces to get out of that foolishness, out of that foolishness. I just heard, I think a couple of days ago, where a young man killed a young lady because she uh, wanted to break up with him. See, four nieces will, would have told that young lady, this man is crazy. This man is jealous, and he will kill you if you try to leave him. See what I'm saying? Wisdom will save your life. And all you're getting, you get sue nieces, get an understanding, and have four nieces to prevent you from get, getting in. We'll talk about him some other time. People talking about, uh, Lord have mercy, the international, the international mother of all the sisters in the world, the international worldwide mother, and talking about uh, William McCray. See, y'all starting something. I'm not going to let, I'm, I'm talking about, <laughs> talk. see, he needed some phonesis. For nieces, uh, he wouldn't be wearing those Salento fingers, and he had a, a woman's hat on with a straw in it. Now you know, see y'all got me off into that. That means strong delusion, reprobation. I feel, you know, he, he's he's to be pitied. That's a shame. Yeah, look just like, oh. Anyway, let me get back to my uh, little teaching or aphorism, what I feel to say to celebrate the fact that this Bishop John Henry Shear, he left, he left two sons, I can't get over it. And it was so beautiful to see the two brothers getting along and supporting each other. And for one son to be a superintendent, like one of the brothers would say from, uh, from uh, let's say, Jamaica, superintendent, two superintendent. I mean, <laughs> superintendent and presiding bishop. I mean, what a legacy. It speaks volume of this man's character. Now I said it before and I'm gonna say it again, that some of the things I said about this great man of God, I needed some Sunnises and some four nieces, but I was, I was Earl Carter, and I was, I didn't say the Lord told me nothing. I just said it was reported to me. And the report was not right. So I uh, talked to Bishop Sheard, and we got it together. I'm not too big to say, hey, I made a mistake. And I took the video down, and Bishop uh, J. Drew Shear, the presiding bishop. We have no problems with each other. And Ethan, that's right, we have no problems with each other. And I want to say that uh, Bishop Jerry Macklin, he preached a great, great eulogy today. I'm talking about this man went on and preached. I'm talking about a message Oh, I enjoyed him so. I enjoyed him so. Praise the Lord for that message. I mean, I mean, he just went on about his business. So I want everybody to know I enjoyed the uh, first assistant. And they're working so well together. That's wonderful. All right, so let me, I'm going to be laconic, short, and sweet tonight, but I just can't get over the example of this great man of God. 
that he trained those two young men and Bishop Jew Drew Sheard, the presiding bishop, and I'm so glad that Bishop John Henry Sheard saw the elevation of his son to be elevated to be the presiding bishop, the highest office in the church, chief apostle. And he, he wears it so well. You know, he has what you call class. Class is to be able to walk with the elites and keep the common touch and make everybody feel comfortable. He takes time. He's not somebody who is not touchable. He's like Jesus. Jesus said he even suffered little children to come unto me. Where did he learn that from? His daddy. He learned it from his daddy. Now let me go back and give you what I was, well, what I'm going to say is that when Bishop when Bishop said about what his father told him, this is powerful. This is not me. This is what Bishop Drew Sheard said about what his father taught him. He said, his father said, I want you to listen to me good. And he said, listen, whatever I do, I want you to do. Follow my example. And I like the way he articulated. He said, if I drink liquor, go buy you some liquor and drink it. If I smoke, go buy you some cigarettes and smoke it. If I treat your mother wrong, then you are at liberty to treat your wife wrong. I said, wow. Mm, mm, mm. I think every father, well, if he's a good father, he ought to be able to say to his sons, that do what I do. Whatever you see me do, I want you to do it. Bishop Sheard, isn't that, isn't that awesome? Bishop Sheard followed his father, uh, finished school, went to college, and, got, and received several degrees, just like his daddy. You know, Jesus was like that. He said, I, don't, I do everything my father tells me to do. He follows his father. And so when you have a father that is a good father, all you that uh, have a good father, you need to follow his footsteps and do what he would do. He said, do what I do. You know, the old saying, don't do as I say, but, well, don't do as I do, but do as I say. That's crazy. I'm going to tell you this. What young people see, they will do. And what you do in moderation your children would take it to the extreme. David had, yes, David had seven wives. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Now that is to say what you do in moderation, your children will take it to the extreme. They will take it to the extreme. That's why you have to be careful as to what you do in front of your children, what they hear. 
if you cuss, your children gonna cuss, and they're going to be an extreme example of you. Uh, two paws, modeling example. Mothers, if your daughters see that your house looking like sin, dipped in confusion, and roaches having banquets and look like the house, uh, I'm talking about being messed up and you don't clean your house, you, and then uh, uh, everything seemed to be out of whack and not according to what it ought to be. If you are a slob, then your children gonna be a slob. That is, your daughters will be a slob, slobette. And she will never be good for a husband because you have not been an example. If the daughters see you fussing with your, your husband and that's her daddy, you gonna train her how not to respect men not to respect her husband. And same uh, when the young man see that his father is derelict of responsibility, uh, his father beats on his wife and his father drinks liquor and his father do this and that and the other, that boy is going to do the same thing but only to the extreme. And you got to be careful if you're not worthy of being his hero. Because people tend to uh, morph into their heroes or they gravitate toward the person that is their hero. So the father must be a living example, being read being a living epistle, being read by the children. That's right. One of the main things my son said to me, she said, he said, Daddy, I want you to know that you train us right. My daughter said that the other day. She said, listen, we got the right training. There's no excuse. But, uh, if my daughter and my son said, well, we drinking because you drank. All right? We smoking because you smoke. All right? We steal and rob because we saw you. You got arrested how many times? How you going to tell me? You see what I'm saying? And before I forget, you lead by influence and not by authority. Oh, I'm going to say that again because... Uh, Adam had authority, but Eve had influence. And influence is stronger than authority. Listen, if your son or your daughter don't really love you, and they are influenced by you to love you, all right, when you try to get them to do something, if they don't love you, or the are not influenced by you, authority will not do it. So even Jesus, he uh, he led by influence. Uh, Muhammad, he led by the sword, authority, but no influence. And uh, Napoleon said that uh, Jesus is more than a conqueror because a conqueror, he would lead by authority and the sword. But Jesus, uh, even Napoleon said, I, I tell you, Jesus is more than a conqueror. And he said, I'm a, I am a conqueror, but, and he said, men will die for me and have died for me, but my presence 
is necessary. All right? My presence is necessary. Because they, they're being led by fear and by the sword. But Jesus, he said, is more than a conqueror because men uh, have died for him and will die for him, but his presence is not necessary. Because Jesus leads by love and influence. He said, if you love me, not if you're afraid of me. Now, this Old Testament God, I don't want to talk about him because he has a bad reputation. And that Old Testament God, will he'll kill you if you don't obey. Oh, yes, God will, I mean, kill you. That Old Testament God, the one that one of the professors in a seminary said he wouldn't go across the street to hear about the God of the Old Testament. And I've been saying it for a while. God was so bad in the Old Testament until Jesus had to come in the New Testament to give him a better reputation. This God of the Old Testament, man, he had burned up Sodom and Gomorrah. He did and sent the flood and, and then went to the camp of the Israelites that he delivered that he delivered them from Egypt and because they rebelled against him and stirred him up, he killed 250 leaders and another 14,700 swallowed up Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. This God do not play. But Jesus, he had to come to give God a better reputation. So Jesus leads by influence. Well, love and influence. If you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. You'll do what I asked you to do. When children are told to do something and if they don't love you, tell them to go wash some dishes, you're gonna lose some dishes. They're gonna break up some dishes just to send you a message. I don't want to wash no dishes. Bang a lang, bang a bang. But if they love you, they will wash the dishes. And they'll do something extra, scrub the floor, because they love you. Love will make you do right. Uh, authority is strenuous. It's not compatible with the, <clears throat> the spirit of peace or the spirit of influence. So everybody needs to know that, <clears throat> that a man like Bishop John H. Sheard, he led by example and he led by influence. I thought that was so wonderful. I will never forget that. I wanted to, I wanted uh, to always ex express to my even grandchildren, and I'm telling telling my son and and daughter that your children will take what you do to the extreme. That's why you got to be the kind of modeling example. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. And that's what Bishop Sheard was saying to his two sons. Do what I do. Wow. How many fathers are well adjusted and mature enough and have that kind of two paws example of being a model to your children? How many kids are in jail today because the father is a jailbird, in and out of jail, a recidivist? If you are a recidivist, your child is going to be a recidivist. I mean, you've heard stories where uh, I remember I heard about an African, and uh, he, he uh, was caught stealing. 
And uh, so when they caught him and, and they put him in jail and asked him, said, why are you still? Why are you still so much? He said, well, me father was a thief. And me father, father was a thief. Generational. That stuff is real. He said he steal because his father was, was a thief. And his father was a thief. That's why you got to get saved and break that generational perpetuality. You got to break it. My father, he was the bishop of the street. My father drank and my father smoked. And you know the thing? Him and I ended up smoking and drinking together. And I figured, well, if he's that old and, and the cigarette haven't bothered him, it's certainly not going to bother me. Drinking and smoking. Because my father drank and smoked. And he was my mentoring, anchoring personality. And I want to say that uh, thank God. God, my father got saved before he died. And my mother got saved. I bless you. All right. My mother got saved before she died. But oh, thank God for fathers like Bishop Sheard. Train his sons to be like him. And oh, they are like him. I'm telling you, Bishop Jay, Drew, Sheard. I think somebody alluded to that today. He said, when you look at Bishop Sheard, you see senior. And that's the way it ought to be. I mean, I'm so proud. I'm glad I came today. Well, I got here yesterday. And I'm glad that I came today to experience such a wonderful home-going service. And I'm telling you, Mitchell Temple, uh, you, you had a great pastor, and you all loved him so. And now his son is following after his footsteps. Isn't that wonderful? So listen, I'm getting ready to close, but I wanted to say that about what I experienced. Yeah, he modeled by action. That's good. Y'all got it. And action speaks louder than words. Yeah, you can say a lot of stuff. I told you to do this and that. But when they see, see, my daddy did this, my daddy did that. Wow. Man. Well, if you have not been an example, repent. And then go to your child and tell your boys, I listen, I have not been a model. I want you all to forgive me, and I want to, by the help of God, to be an example, I want this to be an epoch. I want it to be the end of one thing and the beginning of another. I want a new beginning. And, you know, I took my son out and I repented for some of the things that I did to him. And you know what? Every time he sees me, he gives me a big hug. But don't act like you never made a mistake because everybody didn't have a John... Uh, Henry Sheard. And uh, I mean, these young men are blessed to have had a father like that. How many fathers have left their children and they're out there on drugs and they're doing everything they want to do? Yes. I mean, no example at all. But thanks be to God. Now there's some other Men in the church, you have been a great example to your children. And I just thank God, I just thank God for what I saw today. I will never forget it. 
never forget it. So we thank God for Bishop Sheard. And I just wanted to say something about what I experienced today. Thank God for the brethren. They was glad to see me and I was glad to see them. And some of them didn't speak to me and I don't blame them. I wouldn't speak to me either. <laughs> I would walk past me. You understand? <laughs> I wouldn't speak to me either. Oh, Elder and Sister Crawley, God bless you. Yeah, I'm in Detroit. And I was at the funeral of uh, Bishop. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't speak to me either. That's right. I walked right on by me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, my mercy. <laughs> yeah, I walked uh, my Mama Road. Yeah, I would have walked right on by me too. You know, tell them I don't speak to him. And some of the brethren, they treated me so nice. Some of the ones that uh, uh, should have felt bad and they didn't let it get to them. And uh, I, hey, I don't have no grudges. I don't have no, I don't have no bad feelings. No, that's right. I don't have no bad feelings. That's right. I love everybody. And some of the times, sometimes you don't bring stuff up. I mean, you don't want to bring it up. You remember what you did. No, leave it alone. And they come to you and, and they repent, fine. But don't bring it up again. I think they said, let sleeping dogs lie. Or something. Don't wake them up. You know, you forgive the person and keep going. But you don't you know, hold it over their, their heads and, you know, <clears throat> no. You do what's necessary for peace. See, I'm a peacemaker. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> I'm a peacemaker. That's right. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, he's talking about his cross is coming, and, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're not we're not gonna have to use cross for Christmas time because we're gonna say uh, say forget those things which are behind and press toward that mark and the high calling in Christ Jesus. So I wanted everybody to to know that what we saw today was wonderful, marvelous, and I will never forget it. And again, congratulations to the new presiding bishop, the son of Bishop John Henry Sheard. And I applaud, God bless you, Sister Dolores, yeah, I applaud, I celebrate, the life of this man, that he left a legacy of two fine young men. Oh my God, I hope that I influence my son. Yes, that he would be better than me. Yeah, sometime I didn't, I didn't have no class, the only class I had or uh, being polished was on my shoes. That's it. But you know something about God. He takes a nobody. The Church of God in Christ will take a nobody and make them somebody by the power of God that God has made available. That uh, whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, let him get into the crucible called the church. The potter's house. Work a work on the wheel, and God will make you somebody. I know. I was right on one of them right on brothers, right on upside your head, right on down the street with the pawn sh at the pawn shop, 
selling your stuff. But thanks be to God who's able to work that metamorphosis and change you from a tadpole to a jumping frog. Oh, from a worm to a beautiful butterfly. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you're a whole monger, you're not new. If you're a, uh, a sissy, oh, I, I, Lord have mercy, help me tonight. You're not new. You like an old worm. No metamorphosis, just a worm. And what we saw today, ooh, what a mess. But uh, God will work in your life, the will and to do. Even when you're not willing, God will work it in you, the will and to do. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I don't want to be verbostic. I don't want to be guilty of what I just taught, that unnecessary words. But I think everything I said tonight was necessary because this man has made such an indelible impression upon my life. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better preacher. I want to be a better leader, a better child of God, period. Yeah, it inspired me. All right, God bless you and God keep you. If you believe in this ministry, I want you to go to earlcarterministry.com and make a donation by the way of Zelle, by the way of PayPal, by the way, yeah, by the way of PayPal, by the way of Cash App. Will you do that? Thank you all that gave tonight by the way of the super chat line. Thank you so much. And the rest of you, if you want to be a blessing to this ministry, go to earlcarterministry.com and give. Make a donation. Also, I want you all to subscribe, like, and share. Subscribe, like, and share. What did I say? Subscribe, like, and share. And the Lord will bless you for doing so. All right? All right. Praise God. Now, Sunday morning, we're going to be here and we're going to try to work it out that we can do a live stream uh, from uh, the church here. All right? A large, I mean, a, a live streaming. We want to do that. All right? So we're going to work it out where we can have a uh, live service on Sunday morning. And we come on at, uh, at 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. So you all stay tuned, and hopefully we can work it out where we can have a live service. All right? All right, God bless you, and God keep you is my prayer. And all wicked folks. Oh, I got something to say. I don't want to let it out. But all wicked folk have a bad night and a bad day tomorrow. All right? All right. God bless you. And we'll see you all on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll let you know exactly how we're going to do it. All right. God bless you and God keep you. And I'll see you all on, oh, I forgot, Coop's Pit Barbecue Sauce. Oh, yes, Coop's Pit Barbecue Sauce. We got sweet and spicy. <laughs>
We got, <laughs> oh, Lord, give me strength. Sweet and spicy, and the other is, uh, what is it, Dolores? You got to help me. Sweet and spicy, and the other is, uh, I can't think of it. Anyway, y'all need to call this number, 786 uh, 344 3905. 786 344 29, no, 3905. So he, he has this wonderful barbecue sauce. And, uh, well, thank you. God bless you. Yes. Yeah, they enjoyed the teaching tonight. Well, it wasn't hard tonight because I had the backdrop of this man's life. And uh, so I thank God for this man's life. All right. I'm done. I'll see you all uh, on Sunday. And all you wicked folk, have a bad night and a bad day tomorrow. Yeah, the, the, the uh, T-shirts, I forgot to say something about the T-shirts. My assistant, she's working on it. And I think uh, by next week we should have uh, copies uh, examples of the T-shirts. Uh, no, well, no apology necessary. Just respect. And uh, it was reported to me. And then the other is, uh, sin makes you stupid. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. And we probably have some more T-shirts. I thought about. Uh, all truth need is a personality. And that should be a t-shirt also. And uh, the back of it is, it should say, well, all truth need is a personality. And God sent you. You know, did I say it was reported to me? Yeah, that should be one. And uh, what else? Anyway, we'll think about it. But thank God that the Lord has blessed us to be able to teach a lesson tonight based upon this man's legacy. All right, God bless you, and I'll see you all on Sunday morning. All right. Thank God for the teaching, too. God bless you. Bye-bye.